Welcome back. I'm OG and I know I say this often, but today I really do have something special to show you. Just look at what I've built. Just look at it. Do you know what it is? It's a wig. That's right, a wig. Just like the fake hair you put on someone's head. A wig. Only this is a different kind of wig. This wig is a wing in ground effect kind of wig. In other words, this aircraft, or more accurately this wig craft, is designed specifically to exploit an aerodynamic phenomenon known as ground effect. Without giving a physics lesson, very simply, ground effect is an effect experienced at very low altitudes, just above the ground, whereby an aircraft is able to gain more lift and less drag than usual. It applies to both helicopters and fixed wing aircraft. Some craft, like wigs, actually I can't think of anything else other than wigs, can only operate in ground effect. They can fly, but only at very low altitudes. Any higher and they lose ground effect. So they operate literally a few meters above the surface. Typically, I think, at an altitude of half their wingspan. The wig craft I've created is called the Loon. And no, I have no idea how to pronounce that correctly. Please don't lynch me. The Germans are still angry about me saying Schneebrecher. Or Schneebrecher. Or Schneebrecher. Whatever it was. Es tut mir leid, Deutschland. The Loon is an old Soviet design. And there was only one Loon class that was ever completed. A second Loon was being built, but it was converted into a rapid response mobile hospital instead. The Loon is, or rather it was, a seaplane, or a sea wig. And this is where the video title, Son of a Sea Monster, comes from. Perhaps it should be daughter of a sea monster, since I normally refer to a vessel as a she. Whatever. The Loon was based on a very large prototype wig, which was colloquially referred to as the Caspian Sea Monster. The Caspian Sea Monster was the largest operational aircraft built at the time, and it's second only to the Antonov 225, which was built later on in size. And of course that was also destroyed, ironically, by the Russians. So, Loon is a mini Caspian Sea monster. And yes, she did operate in the Caspian Sea. In fact, she is lying on the shores of the sea right now, on the west side. If you look on Google Earth, you can see her for yourself. I'll try to remember to post a link in the video description. West side. Loon may have been smaller than the mighty Caspian Sea Monster original version, but she is no less fearsome. That's because she has those six tubes on her dorsal area, and each of them has an SSN-22 sunburn missile. It's at this stage that I must try very hard to resist the urge to let my old naval combat officer persona resurrect itself. The old combat officer in me desperately wants to give you a full detailed threat brief on the sunburn missile. But no, I think I have this under control. Suffice to say that the old sunburn is a large, fast and very deadly surface to surface missile, even by modern standards. It does also come in an air to surface version. Loon carried six of them. Enough to destroy any ship afloat today. Even if that ship is able to counter a couple of incoming missiles. Which isn't easy. Again, I will resist the temptation to go into more detail. Yeah. 
This build in KSB2 was terribly difficult. Honestly, I nearly gave up trying to get footage of it on more than one occasion, especially footage in flight, but even on the runway. The wings fall off constantly, as big wings always seem to do in KSB2, even with no load on them. I put a ticket in about this yesterday. I am so tired of the wings falling off. And the wheels, of all things, gave me endless issues. Yes, my version does have wheels hidden within the fuselage because unlike the Loon, which has no wheels, mine has to take off from land because many parts in KSP2 don't float, even though they floated in KSP1. Specifically the cargo bays, which my Loon is chiefly built out of, that is its fuselage, they sink instead of floating, so mine is a seaplane that takes off from land. I had to also balance it very carefully. All the fuel tanks up at the front side are completely empty and dry. And then I have some very large ones tucked into the rear, filled with fuel to try to balance it out a bit. I apologize that I couldn't fly any exciting circuit for this video. I was just A, trying to keep the Loon flying realistically low, and B, trying to keep the wings from falling off. I would say that I was partially successful with both of those objectives. Yes, this is another voiceover video. I hate doing voiceovers, at least unnecessarily. They are so much harder and so much more time consuming when it comes to editing. But unfortunately we are suffering through a rather severe electricity crisis here in South Africa. In simple terms, the country has basically run out of electricity. And for various reasons that makes it easier to create videos with voiceovers though that does mean I can't produce them as frequently as I'd like to. This particular one I'm recording the audio first and then I'm going to overlay the video onto it. Normally I do it the other way around. So we'll see how that works. I'm also working with a script and ironically I am now off script. So I might as well throw this away. If you want to know more about the Loon, I'll drop a link or two in the video description. I had one with really nice pictures, hopefully I can find that link again. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this footage. This one does look rather realistic, even if I do say so myself. But she better, she took me many hours to build. Please visit again soon. Until we meet again, I wish you fair winds and following seas. OG out. <laughs>